Teardown time. This is a buzzer DC input and sound out, as you might imagine. I'll just turn it on. It looks like it's meant for like an alarm. Uh, it's an extraordinarily loud uh, device. Um, let's take a look at the engineering. Uh, first obvious thing is the uh, resonator here. Uh, it obviously directs sound out this direction, and it's been constructed quite carefully to, I suspect, amplify that sound. Let's uh, tear it down and see the parts inside. Okay, taking the unit apart, uh, this is the piezoelectric element. You can see a glue uh, pattern here, and what had happened was there was a resonator glued on top. It basically acts like a speaker, so as this disc vibrates, the sound gets amplified by the, the chamber on the back. Uh, of course, two leads then going off into the actual assembly, uh, which is actually reasonably interesting. Um, this resistor I just hacked on, this was what would have gone to the piezo. I've done that so that my oscilloscope could measure the output voltages. But uh, if we look down here, we can see a transistor, uh, an auto transformer, a capacitor, and an integrated circuit. Interestingly enough, on a different uh, circuit board. So I guess the vendor can put down different uh, integrated circuits for different sounds or something like that. Otherwise, I'm not sure why they just wouldn't have uh, bonded it right onto one circuit board. Um, this topology here is basically a voltage uh, booster. The PZOs we were seeing there requiring uh, uh, tens of volts to operate. And uh, what's going on here is a, a schematic like this classic design. You have an NPN transistor, the uh, integrated circuit over here drives the transistor low, causes current to flow through this coil. There's always three taps on an auto transformer. Current flows down here, uh, builds up a magnetic field, and then when the transistor stops conducting electricity, the magnetic field collapses, and of course it collapses around all the coils, uh, creating a fairly high voltage. Let's just go to the oscilloscope and uh, take a peek at that. Okay, we're at uh, 10 volts per division. I'll insert a picture of the actual assembly so we can sort of follow along as to what I'm probing. Uh, the first pin is the output of the uh, chip on board going into the base of the transistor. You can see it's uh, rising from 0 to 10 volts. That makes sense. I'm thinking about 10 volts into the assembly. You can see it's basically doing two modulated frequencies, one uh, slightly lower than the other. And of course that creates that whoop whoop sound which is uh, desired if you're creating an alarm buzzer. Um, but what's much more interesting is when I go on to the collector of the transistor, you can see the signal's much, much larger. In fact, I'm going to change my scope here. Uh, I'm now sitting at 100 volts per division. I'll just stop this display as well. Um, what, of course, we're creating here is a really high rapid voltage change. Now, it's even higher than uh, when we first measured it because I took the uh, piezo off and I replaced it with a 1 mega ohm resistor. Uh, so it's creating just a tremendous voltage. But it's exactly what you want. What's happening here at the very start here, the transistor's uh, being turned on, the current's flowing through the uh, inductor. Uh, the inductor, of course, has very little uh, resistance, there's no voltage. Eventually, then, the transistor's told to stop conducting, so all the magnetic flux uh, collapses around the coil. That induces a really huge voltage, of course, and that's uh, what you want, it goes to the piezo. Uh, then, eventually, the magnetic flux all collapses, and what you see here is that's at 10 volts sitting on the mid top of the auto transformer. Uh, it stays at 10 volts because there's nothing conducting at the moment transistor turns back on and of course the cycle repeats. So a classic way of driving a piezo. All right, next step, um, take a look at the actual chip on board. You can see there was two circuit boards here and sitting on this little black blob is an integrated circuit which was actually driving and creating the signals. Uh, let's uh, take this, put it in some acid and see if we can extract the silicon dye to take a look at what that looks like. Okay, the part's been de-encapsulated. It's uh, under a millimeter square, very small dye. It's uh, sitting under a little bit of oil there. It helps with the uh, optical imaging. Okay, well here's the integrated circuit looking straight down. There's seven bond pad locations on the die, but only five got used. This chip probably has multiple uh, purposes. Um, looking at that section in the middle, I suspect we're looking at a, a ROM-based lookup table approach. Basically you have a counter that counts the binary sequence pattern, goes to a small, essentially ROM, which looks up the pattern, and then it gets driven out to the uh, speaker. Uh, let me just uh, explain my reasoning. If I zoom in and look at the very bottom there along the columns, there looks like what would almost be a binary pattern of waveforms, and uh, I presume what's going on is they've routed the wiring such that it touches a, a gate below it, which is used to do a column decode. Um, coming back out, uh, we can see on the right-hand side a large silver structure. Pretty sure that would be a capacitor. Uh, what you need to do, of course, is create some sort of oscillator, some sort of timing circuit to create um, the waveforms. Probably a relaxation oscillator, basically, that capacitor gets charged and discharged. And to explain my reasoning there, I didn't show it in the video, but uh, I actually adjusted the voltage onto the buzzer, and you could audibly hear the buzzer slowing down as you reduce the voltage. So a good hint there that we're probably looking at that kind of circuit. On the uh, pad on the lower bottom, uh, clearly two transistor structures. Uh, looks like a sort of a driver output. I suspect that went on to the actual transistor. Otherwise, those rows and columns are basically digital logic. So um, looks like a really cost-effective design. 
Uh, really similar to the uh, candle teardown. If you look onto my blog and uh, my website, you'll see the, the candle teardown I did earlier this year. So there we go. Another small little interesting die that's uh, probably produced in the millions. Well, there we go. The world of engineering and another device which kicks around uh, almost certainly in everyone's home. This kind of circuit or something very similar to it's used in smoke detectors, of course, and then uh, burglar alarms, the car alarms all use this kind of uh, device. Now, as always, if you want to take a longer look at the uh, silicon die photograph, I have a copy on electronupdate.blogspot.com, and uh, you can see some more details about the teardown there.